Hi, and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking grid effect using Adobe After Effects and Trapcode Mere 3. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine. 30 FPS at a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once you have that, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new solid and I'm just going to call this Mir. So now obviously we are going to look for the Mir 3 effect. Now Mir 3 is a plugin from Red Giant. So the links are in the description if you wish to download it and continue along with this tutorial. So now once we've got that out of the way, the next thing that we need to do is we need to open up the geometry settings. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change the X, Y, Z to uh, individual and I'm just going to bump up the size X to about let's say 5000 and I'm going to change the size Y to about 6000. Now it should fill up the entire screen but we obviously can't see what's actually happening here and there's no dots around. So what we need to do is I'm just going to come down to the shader settings and I'm just going to change the draw value to points. And so now it will turn into dots. And while I'm here, I might as well increase the point size to about five just so that we can see them. And the normal effect, we're going to bump that up to about 80. So now once we have that out of the way, what we need to do is we need to go back to the geometry settings and we're just going to change a few things. We're going to change the rotate X to negative 90. So now we have a kind of a thin beam of dots. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the vertices X to let's say 100 and the vertices Y to 83. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have like a random kind of scattered amount of dots on your composition. Now you can change this if you want. So you can go back in and change the size X and Y and that will give you a unique kind of look. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to come down to the fractal settings and I'm going to change two things. The first thing I'm going to change is the amplitude. So I'm going to bring that up to about 80 and I'm going to also change the frequency to about 50. And so again, if you change this, you know, you can get some really kind of unique kind of patterns. So see something like that is looking pretty cool. But again, I'm just going to stick with my values that I have. So the next thing that we need to do is I'm just going to turn on this proportional grid. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to the geometry settings and I'm just going to go to the position. And I'm just going to position this until the bottom third of the screen is kind of hitting that line. And so now what we need to do is we need to mirror that. So I'm going to search for the effect called mirror and I'm just going to change the reflection angle to negative 90. And so now I have that on the top and on the bottom. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to change the color. So I'm just going to go into the material settings and then I'm going to grab a color from Color Hunt. So this is my color scheme from Color Hunt. I'm going to use these two colors for the background, but this is going to be the color for the dots. So I'm just going to click that and I'm going to import it into my After Effects composition. Now I am going to change a few values in here. So I'm going to bring up the nudge to about 170 and I'm also going to bring up the ambient to about 150. So you can play around with some of these settings if you want it brighter, darker, but I think I'll leave it somewhere around 140, 150, something like that. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually animate this. So to animate this, what we need to do is I'm just going to go into the fractal settings and all I'm going to do is just animate this scroll Y. So you can see what happens here as I scrub through that. You can see it's moving forward. So all I need to do is hold option on my Mac and alt on a Windows machine and click that stopwatch. I'm going to write time times 300. And so now if you've done that correctly, now it's moving forward into that space. And I think that's looking pretty cool. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to add some glow to this effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for an effect called glow. 
and I'm gonna change some of these values here. So I'm just gonna bring up the threshold a little bit, so to about 100%, maybe 90%, something like that. I'm also going to bring up the glow radius to maybe something like 80. And I'm also going to increase the glow intensity, maybe something like 2.0, something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that again. And now I'm gonna change some of these values. So I'm gonna bring down the, the threshold to about maybe something like 70%. And I'm also going to bring down the radius. So if you don't want that much glow to actually appear on your dots, you can bring it, you can even bring it right down. So maybe something around like 10, 15, 20, something like that. And you can bring down the intensity. Maybe we can bring it back to one or maybe like 0 0.8, something like that maybe even less 0.6. So you really have to play around with some of those settings to get the right uh, glow that you want for your composition. So I've dropped it down to about 0.4. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click, add a new solid, call it BG, and then I'm just gonna drop that underneath my mirror layer. And I'm gonna search for the effect called gradient Cramp. And then I'm going to go back to color hunt and get my two colors. So I'm going to go with these two dark colors here and I'm just going to put it back into my composition. Now it's still a bit bright the background so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that start of the ramp off the screen a little bit just so that we have more of that dark color in there. So now once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is I'm just gonna create a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna add the effect called curves. And so I'm just gonna create a simple S bend. So you can see kind of what happens here where we kind of make the colors a little bit darker here to make the dots kind of uh, stand out a bit more. The next thing that I'm gonna do on another adjustment layer is I'm going to add an effect called noise and I'm just gonna bump that up to about 8% just so we tie it all in together. And then finally what I'm gonna do is just to make these dots a little bit more unique and random, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my me layer and I'm gonna search for an effect called turbulent displace. Now you can go as crazy as you want with this, but I'm really going to scale all this stuff uh, back down. So maybe we'll have an amount of about 20 and even a size of about 20 or say 25. And now what we're gonna do is we are just going to animate the evolution. So it's going to kind of jiggle around like that. So it's pretty easy to do. All we're gonna do is we're gonna hold uh, option on our uh, Mac and then I'm just gonna click on that and I'm gonna go time times 10. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have a slight bit of movement with the dots as it moves forward through that composition. So the final thing that we are going to add is some optics compensation. So again, on the mirror layer, I'm just going to search for an effect called optics compensation. And then I'm just gonna bring up this value. So you can see what's happening here. It's creating this kind of fish eye effect. Now, I want this to be subtle, so I'll probably leave it at something like that. But now we have all this black area around our dots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press S for scale, and then I'm just going to bump that up until the black area is all covered. I can turn off my grid as well. And that's about it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned how to create this cool kind of retro kind of grid effect using the Trapcode Mia plugin. Anyways, guys, I'm off. So I will see you guys all in the next video. See ya.